Hello, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Natsel. Um, today is Thursday. We're almost done with the week. Um, today is quiz day, and next week you guys have spring break, so I'm sure you're so excited for that. And then after spring break, then we will go down to only three days a week of e-learning. So that will be something to get used to as well. But we've been working this week on um, how to classify two-dimensional figures. And so we are going to be working on a quiz. So we are ready for lesson 30 quiz. And I wanted to go ahead and read it out loud to you guys. So right here, you're going to type your name so that Mr. H and I can tell who submitted their quizzes. Number one says, which of the following most specifically describes a rhombus? The first one says, a plane figure that is a polygon. Is a rhombus a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides? Is a rhombus a parallelogram with four sides of equal length? Or is a rhombus a polygon with four sides? So choose the one that most specifically describes a rhombus. Number two, you're going to look at this tree diagram right here. You're going to match the missing term to the correct blank space in the diagram to create a hierarchy. So we're looking at this hierarchy. So letter A is the most general, and we go from the most general down to the most specific. So here's a general, and then this is the most general, and then this is one is still pretty general. And then we have three little bit more specific ones that meet this category. So these three shapes are also this, which are also this. And then this one has one underneath it. And then E has two more that, and then this would be the most specified. This is the least or the most generalized. This is very specific down here. And then H doesn't have anything underneath it. So I want you to look at your choices now. And your choices are right triangles, pentagons, polygons, rhombuses, triangles, plane figures, quadrilaterals, and parallelograms, okay? So out of these choices, the most generalized one or the one that could fit, that could fit all of these shapes into it would go up here on A. So then you would just click on A for that one. And so each one of these letters is only gonna be used, each one of these shapes is only gonna be used once. Do not forget that you are allowed to go back and use your anchor chart, because this would be posted in the classroom if we were in the classroom. So remember, it goes from the most general to the most specific. Now we don't have all of these words as our choices, but again, most general to most specific. Then here's general and specific triangles. Again, general and specific triangles. And then we have plane figures, which is our most general, to polygons, which then goes to quadrilaterals, pentagons, and hexagons. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Don't forget a polygon is any closed figure. Um, okay, so again, you go from the most general to the most specific, okay? Use your resources that you have and pay attention to them, okay? We have right triangles, pentagons, polygons, rhombuses, triangles, plane figures, quadrilaterals, and parallelograms. Okay, and you only use each one one time. Okay, number three, you're going to choose the term to go into each blank to make the statement true. Okay, so an equilateral triangle is always, sometimes, or never. Oh, it's not showing the whole question. Let's see. Um, sorry guys, I'm trying to figure out. Okay, sorry boys and girls. Um, I can't see the whole sentence, so I'm just going to go ahead and go to the quiz 
and read the sentences, but you're going to choose always, sometimes, or never in each one of the blanks. So the quiz says an equilateral triangle is always, sometimes, or never an obtuse triangle. A right triangle is always, sometimes, or never an isosceles triangle. The next one says an equilateral triangle is always, sometimes, or never an isosceles triangle. The next one says an isosceles triangle is always, sometimes, or never a scalene triangle. The next one says an equilateral triangle is always, sometimes, or never an acute triangle. And the last one, an obtuse triangle is always, sometimes, or never an acute triangle. Okay, so then number four says, Robert uses the flow chart below to order quadrilaterals in a hierarchy. Which statement explains whether Robert's flow chart is correct or not? Robert said quadrilaterals are the most general, and then it goes to parallelograms, which then goes to rectangles and squares. A says it is not correct because rectangles and squares are both parallelograms, but rectangles is a more specific subcategory of squares. B says it is not correct because squares and rectangles are both parallelograms, but squares is a more specific subcategory of rectangles. C says it is correct because squares and rectangles are both parallelograms and squares and rectangles do not share any other properties. Or D, it is correct because squares and rectangles are both parallelograms and squares and rectangles both have four right angles. So you need to choose which one of these is correct and then you can submit your Google form and your test will be completed. If you have any questions or if you need anything from Mr. H or myself, please do not hesitate to send us a Google Hangout or um, get a hold of us on GoGuardian. Okay, good luck. I know you guys will do great. And I miss all of you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.